Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NewCoder.com and in this tutorial we are going to be going over form validation with functional component. Alright, so to get started we're going to start off with a very simple form. We have a first name state, a last name state. We have an on submit handler and all we're doing is preventing the default from occurring. And we have a form with two inputs. So our first name and our last name. And each of these inputs have their own on change function. Okay, so pretty simple. So what I wanna do is actually add validation to this form. And in order to do that, let's come up here within our on submit handler. And this is typically where you would want to validate the user's input to make sure that he's giving you what you want. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and create a function. So we'll just declare it here for a second. And this function is gonna return a Boolean and this Boolean is gonna determine whether or not there's an error within this form. So I call the function form validation. And let's go ahead and invoke this. And now what we could do is go ahead and create this form. Now we're actually going to have to keep track of two more states. So what we can do is I'm going to come up here and we'll declare two states. And the first state is the first name errors that you want to keep. So this is going to be an object. And we'll just say you state and we'll pass in an empty object to be initialized to. And let's go ahead and make a copy of this and we'll have an error object for last name. So you could keep this all as one object, but I thought it was easier just to break it down into two different objects. And we'll change the setter to set last name error. And this should be set first name error. Okay, so these are both initialized to empty objects. And what we can do is within our form validation, We'll create two empty objects, and this is gonna be used later to set it as the state for our first name error and our last name error. So we'll say first name error, it's gonna be initialized to an empty object. Same thing with last name error. Next, let's go ahead and set a flag. So by default, we'll just say that everything is valid. So we'll set this to true. And if there is an error, we'll set this flag to false. Okay, so that's how that's gonna work. So first thing we're gonna do is let's say, let's go ahead and check to see if a username is too short. So let's say if first name dot trim. So let's go ahead and get rid of the white space and we'll go ahead and say dot length is less than five. So that means you can't have a first name that is less than five characters long. Then we'll set an error. We'll say first name error dot, and this is what you can name your error. You can name this whatever you want. So I'll just call this first name short. And for that error message, we'll just say first name is too short. And since this is an error, what we can do is set our flag to false, meaning this form has an error, okay? Next, we could do the same thing. So we'll come down here. Let's give us some more errors. Next, we could check to see if first name dot trim dot length. And this time we'll check to see if the name is too long. So if the length of the name is too long, we could give another error. So we could say first name error and we can name this error first name long. And we'll just say that, hey, your first name is too long. And we can also, again, set our flag to false. All right, so we have two error messages for the first name. Let's go ahead and give our last name an error message. So let's say that for argument's sake, for our last name, we wanna make sure that it includes one, two, three in it. So we'll say if last name does not include one, two, three, that means that this is an invalid last name. So we could add that to our error object. So I just named it last name one, two, three. 
and we'll go ahead and say last name must have one, two, three. And we'll go ahead and set our is valid to false. All right, so now I think you guys pretty much get the picture. We could go all day with this, but that's pretty good for now. And now what we can do is update our error objects. We'll have to call the setter. So we'll say set first name error and we'll pass in the error object we created. And we'll do the same thing for our last name. After we do that, let's go ahead and return our flag. And there you go. So now what we can do is let's actually talk about how we could display our errors to the user. So right now we're setting our errors, but we're not displaying it. So what we could do is let's say I want to display the first name error messages under the first name input and the last name error messages under the last name input. So what we could do is come down here. I'm going to use some JavaScript. We're going to use the object and object has a method called keys. And what we need to do is pass our first name error object. And what this is going to do is return an array of the property names within that object. And what I could do afterwards is map over this array and we'll get back the key. So now what I could do is just return a div and let's go ahead and give it a style since this is an error and we'll make it a color of red. Now all that's left to do is go ahead and display the value. So we have the object, the object is first name error. And since we have the key, we can access the property value by just passing in the key like that. Next, you're pretty much going to do the same thing for the last name. So let's go ahead and copy this. We'll place this down here. And instead of first name error, we'll pass last name error. And let's go ahead and change this as well. All right. So now that this is out of the way, let's go ahead and save. Let us look at this in the browser. So here we have our form, first name, last name. Let's go ahead and type, hit submit. You can see that our username is fine. Maybe if I make it a little bit too short, you'll see, hey, first name is too short. If I make it too long, first name is too long, okay? So this appears to be working. And I'll just go ahead and say one, two, three. All right. So our form validation is currently working. So one more thing before I let you guys go is usually whenever you submit, you want to validate if your user input is okay. Once you validate if the user input is okay, what you want to do is we could do a little if statement. And if it is okay, you'll usually want to send this data to your backend or some external API. Now we don't have a backend or we're not using an external API for this tutorial, but once you do that, you'll usually get a response from your server or API, and then you could do whatever you want with that. And then afterwards, usually you would want to reset your form. So you could just call your setters. So we'll call set first name and we'll set it to an empty string and set last name and go ahead and make it an empty string as well. So if I save this, take a look at it in the browser, hit submit. We need a last name with one, two, three. Hit submit again, and there you go. So you submit your form successfully, and then after you submit your form, you reset the form. So that is pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next one.